Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hello. My clutch feels a bit off. <coughs> Oh, I only think it's because my seat's in the different place. My wife's been uh, driving the car. So, what a lovely day. It's just starting to get a bit spring like. We've just had the spring equinox. <coughs> I'm going to take the fast route today because uh, we're not particularly early. How are you anyway? All right, hope you're well. <clears throat> I've had a oh, I've had a weird time. The GDC wrote to me and said that I was two hours short on my CPD. And apparently they they average over every two years, but they'd average the last year of my last cycle with the first year of my new cycle. So now I tell you what, if you if you want to go to the GDC website and read the rules on CPD, they are totally incomprehensible, totally incomprehensible. Half the all the things they list, half of them are compulsory, half of them are merely recommended. The subjects that they want you to take and that there's far more subjects than any one person could learn for a start and uh, you know there's all these rules like you know you can only do this on year this year or alternate years or if you're standing on your left leg etc etc so the basic rule is if you do 10 hours a year you're probably going to be okay. So I need to, uh, I think I've declared, I declared six for last year. And it's the first year of my cycle, so I've got to do, say, 14 this year or something, you know. Anyway, so they, they wrote me this letter, it's called Notice 6, that says that I haven't declared enough CPD. <clears throat> Which, just to recap very quickly, I can't understand because I can't believe I would have would have pressed enter on a submission that was I knew that was inadequate. So I must have th thought it was adequate when I did it. And um, what they do is they just write you this nice little letter saying that you, oh, you may have put your registration at risk, which sort of gives the impression that uh, you know they're just concerned about you and uh, uh, just want to you know. A check on how things are going and uh, make sure you don't get struck off etc anyway it implies that they've got some discretion let's put it that way it implies that they've got some you know that all you need to do is ring up someone and say I'm sorry I don't know if I've done anything wrong you know what do I need to do to put it right and and the short answer is that there's nothing you can do to put it right there's nothing you can do the whole point about CPD is it's a self-declared uh, validation you know you, you declare yourself that you've complied and that but they reserve the right to check check up on you and um, they you know obviously very rarely check up on people but people they do check up on are the people who trip trip the tripwire on the on the declaration so look at that look at all those boxes I could do with one of those to put my firewood in they never give me one there so, um, and <clears throat> you know, it is a source of some concern, especially when you're talking about the difference between having done 10 hours and having done eight hours. And you know, you're going to take a dentist who's got a 40 years service in general practice and remove them from the register over the fact that they're two hours short with their CPD, having never ever been short on their CPD before or. Uh, you know, and also having rather a, a torrid time of it in that period. Um, and I think the dentists tend to assume that if you uh, write a nice letter and say, I'm very sorry, uh, I 
uh, sorry, sorry, it's happened. I'll make it up and I'll make sure it doesn't happen again. That that will work. Or you can write and say, uh, I'm sorry, but uh, you know, I've been very ill, I had brain surgery, or whatever. Um, I'll make it up and that that will work. Or that you can write and ask them for an extension and say, can I have an extension? It's called a grace period of 56 days and that they will, providing you haven't really asked for anything like that before, that they will give it to you and then you will then make it up and then that will work. And I'm afraid in every single instance, uh, you'll, you'll be sadly disappointed because none of those approaches will work. The grace period, for example, you can apply for, but you have to do it before the end of the period to which it applies, which in my case was obviously 31st of December. And on, by 31st of December, I had um, pressed a button on a report, which I was 100% certain was okay. I didn't think that they would query it. Um, I didn't know that, that, that in, you know I was going to be considered to be two hours short by them. So by the time they write to you in February uh, and say, you know, you're, you're short on your CPD, you're well past the point at which you can ask for an extension. You know, it's like, <laughs> we'll, we'll always give you an extension, just don't ever ask. It has to be done before the, the uh, CPD period ends. And as for the other two, illness and, uh, or even forgetfulness or whatever, that's just... Uh, that, that's just a straightforward remove from the register and then uh, download the um, application for restoration and I, I've been through restoration process once I think because I uh, renewed on the 1st of January instead of the 31st of uh, December and you know you really have to start from scratch you you have to get a character reference for example you know, they treat you like the lowliest of the Romanian dentists. You, you have to get a passport photo signed by someone. You're, <laughs> there's, no, there's no restoration procedure for someone who's missed. Anyway, I've covered this in previous podcasts. So, <clears throat> the reason why I'm, I'm saying this now is because uh, I decided to, uh, obviously when I had some time, go back and look at my CPD and what I'd done in the two years, which were 2022, which is the last year of my previous period, and 2023, which is the first year of my of this cycle. And I found out I had done far more, far more than uh, the eight hours that was on their records. They said I declared two hours in 2022 and uh, six hours in 2023. Oh, she stalled. And why do I say she? Because I'm stereotype, stereotyping people who stall at roundabouts. Hang on a second. Here we go. So now, now I'm thinking. Then this is very strange because. I mean, I've done, in 2022, I did about 18 hours CPD. Uh, and 18 plus the... Uh, uh, six I declared in 2023, which actually I found another couple of hours in 2023. So so I'm only 20 hours over the two-year average. So that's well above the 10 that they uh, get upset about. So I'm left with this question, which is... First of all, will I accept the, all, the, all my certificates? Now I think the answer to that has got to be yes. Because um, there's no point asking you for certificates if they're going to say, well, yes, you appear to have all the CPD, but because you didn't fill in your online declaration with enough CPD, we're still going to remove it from the registry. I mean, what would be the point? You might as what's the point of checking the certificates? You might as well just say you, you, you didn't declare enough CPD, therefore we're going to remove it from the register. They wouldn't ask to see all the certificates. And then secondly, uh, why this massive discrepancy between, <laughs> between the, what I did and what they've got? 
I can't, unless I typed two when I meant 20 or something. I don't understand. I just don't understand it. I don't understand how they're saying I've done a in, uh, improper declaration. And I don't understand why they haven't got all my hours recorded for 2022. And I tell you how I feel. <laughs> I feel like the dental of Mr. Bates. I am like, I am like being shafted by, by some computer software somewhere. Because, and I've got no uh, power to try and investigate and find out uh, what, what's going on. But I do, I do believe that they did know about my uh, 18 hours in 2022 because that was what I used to come in over the line for the previous cycle. So they can't not know about those because otherwise they would have complained about my, I would have been getting this letter last year saying that I hadn't done the 100 hours in the 22 cycle. So I know it's a bit complicated, but keep up, okay? Because this could affect you one day. I may have unearthed a major scandal here. It may be that uh, the GDC software is written by Mitsubishi or Fujitsu or whoever it was. Oh. So anyway, I've sent it all off. They've got a deadline of 24th. Now, you know, you're, you're, you have to send it all off before the 24th because if they don't get it by the 24th, then you're automatically removed from the register because on the basis that you haven't replied. And although I have sent it all by email and uh, had an acknowledgement from their computer that they've received an email from me, they do say that they will take three days to respond and I think that will put me past the deadline. Well, it might not anyway, but <clears throat> point is that they say that you know you have to send it by a signed carrier pigeon and all that and that's because the regulations state that a document a document shall only be regarded to have been received if it is sent and signed for on delivery it's a, just an old-fashioned legal contract thing so you can send stuff by email and they do they send the notice by email but then they followed it out with a you know a signed uh, what's it so I don't know if they'll <clears throat> I mean they could turn around and say that the um, the documents were not deemed to have been received but I still oh, I think that they they'd probably be pushing it to do that because I have got an acknowledgement that they received my email but they could say yeah but that was a that was an email of you know wishing happy birthday to your granddaughter and we couldn't understand why you sent it to us, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, I'm getting into, I'm really getting into extreme paranoia territory here. <clears throat> so, I mean, you know, I think they're going to look at this and say, well, why, why has this bloke declared so much less CPD than he's actually done? And that's a question I can't answer. My question to them back will be, why is your system recording so much less CPD than I've actually done. To the extent that, you know, you're about to remove me from the register. So uh, it'll, be all, it'll be resolved in the next week or two. Um, and being removed from the register on, on these grounds is, is appealable. But whether or not, you know, I've got the funds or the will to appeal it, I don't know. I said to my nurse yesterday, I'll be better off just... Um, downloading the <laughs> restoration form and get cracking with the um, the uh, passport size photos. What is this car doing? So We've had, um, on a separate note, we've had a few uh, patients, what I would call coercive patients in recently. What the hell's wrong with my fur? By which I mean uh, uh, people, and they're not necessarily old people or 
some of them, you know, can be in their early 20s. And they're coming in with a lot of pain. They've probably been to two or three dentists plus a dental line hour out of hours emergency service plus A&E plus their GP a couple of times. And they've, they've just right at the end of their tether. Then they finally come to see me and I give them my standard one week's antibiotics, wherever they've been taking, one week's antibiotics, then and then get properly numb and take the tooth out, which is what they mostly need. Oh dear, the poor old bus can't make it up the hill. And uh, yeah, and they're um, you know they're very much like Can, can't you do this? Can't you do this? And you always ask. They always ask it twice. They never ask it three times. And what I did was I um, I, I realised that I was inadvertently I was answering their question twice. So for example, I would say you need antibiotics, and then we'll take it out next week when the infection has calmed down a bit. And they would say, yeah, well, can't you take it out today? And you say, no, I can't take it out today because I probably wouldn't be able to get it numb. I need to wait until the infection's calmed down a bit. And then they'll say, all right then, so, uh, and then they say, but can you, but could you not take it out today? And, and I used to sort of answer, I say, look, no, perhaps you didn't hear my reply last time. Can't take it out today because I need to knock the infection back as far as possible to give us the best chance of uh, getting you numb when you come in. But then now I've realised that, uh, you know, I don't know, I suppose it says you get older, isn't it? You get more sort of, um, uh, I don't know. I don't know whether it's care less. I don't know. I don't think it's care less, but I think you just get a bit more authoritative. I'm always, you know, trying to help people. I'm trying to be a bit subservient and, and trying to explain to people this is how it is, blah, 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 you know. And um, so I suppose I get pushed around a bit more than most dentists insofar as, uh, like, I had a chap in who had a had recently had a filling upper right six, a very very deep filling, nice filling actually, very nice filling, but obviously into the nerve, and um, and next to it he had a crown, a post crown, um, no not not a post crown, just a jacket crown, but it, again it was over a root treatment, a, a five, where I think the five had two roots and they'd only root treated one, so he came in with this diffuse pain on the top right, couldn't tell me which tooth it was. Uh, it was worse with hot things, which tends to point towards um, dead or dying nerves because the increased, uh, they, they just react worse to hot stuff. Um, whereas pain from these obvious radiolucency around the five would have been a more of sort of a, a throbbing pain uh, and or gumboil, etc, etc. Anyway, Vitality tested the six and the six is non-vital. And so having told him that the five needed re-root re treating because of the, uh, um, the, the obvious rarefaction around the apex, um, then had to change in, in midstream and say, well, I think actually the source of his problem in terms of the pain is probably the six because of the recent filling and the fact that it's uh, obviously in the nerve space on the x-ray. And, uh, and then, of course, it's a difficult uh, root filling because... Um, uh, because the, the person who's done this filling, they've exposed the nerve on the distobuccal nerve canal and and uh, and basically just filled it with filling material. So you, you know it's going to be a problem because you're going to be looking for this distobuccal nerve, and it's very deep because it's got a deep box on it, and it's uh, and it's probably full of rock hard composite. Anyway. Um, you know, we spent like a rather enjoyable 10 minutes debating which tooth we should treat. Um, and he's, he's a nice bloke, but he's obviously he's trying to micromanage the uh, situation and said that, you know, did I not think that it was quite likely, um, more likely to be the five than the six. And I said no, because the five had been there for 20 years with this area on it, getting slowly bigger. And if it was going to give him trouble, it probably would have given him trouble before now. There's no logical reason for it to suddenly flare up. 
whereas the six has got this history of recent treatment and uh, no sign of any root filling and, and this massive, massive, overly big filling in it. So in the end, he was like, well, you know, he said, but well, logically, he said, but logically, blah, 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 blah. And I said, look, logically, I said, you're trying to micromanage your treatment. And you know, there's one thing I hate is patients who try and micromanage their treatment. He said, logically, really, uh, it's more likely to be the five. And I said, well, based on, you know, my 40 years of experience, your symptoms and the history of your teeth in the top right. Bearing in mind, I'd literally just electronic pulp tested the tooth, the six, and it was found, and it was dead as a dodo. I said, based on your symptoms, the, the pulp testing, and my, my 40 years of experience, I'm telling you, it's the six, is the most likely, or both, you know, it's, it's, it's the six or both. So, um, so you know, to give him his due, he said, all right, then, all fair enough, you know. And so we ended up opening the six. It turned out I'm gonna to have to refer him for specialist root treatment because uh, the mesobuccal canal is very uh, distorted and the distal buccal is, uh, is a nightmare. So, and, and uh, again, this uh, young girl 20, in her 20s, um, English is a second language, quite abrupt, but I'm, I understand that. I know the uh, mannerisms of uh, the Eastern Europeans, for example. They are, they don't, to us English people, they appear very uh, direct, very abrupt and, and very rude, to be quite honest. You know, I've had a Ukrainian woman invite me to come with her to Ukraine to learn how to do dentistry properly. <laughs> So, okay, okay, yeah, like you do things so well in Ukraine. So, uh, so she's like, can you take the tooth out, can you take the tooth out? And I laughed at her and she said, no, it's not funny, she said, it's not funny. <laughs> I thought, The reason why I was laughing, I'm not laughing at her discomfort. I was laughing because she kept asking me if I could just take the tooth out today. And <clears throat> if you if you can't see the humour, you've got a 20 year old there, 22 year old whose teeth are wrecked, basically. You know, she's got she had other teeth that needed taken out, and not just the lower right six. Her teeth are wrecked. She's 22. She's coming in. And she's insisting that I do things a certain way. Uh, basically, a dentist with over 40 years experience. If you can't see the humour in that, then really, you know, you're, you're, uh, you might as well book your funeral plan. And I couldn't help laughing. I can't help, because I am just, I am fed up to hear with people telling me how to do my job. And I include the GDC in that because they are dominated by academics who make, uh, you know, they're conflicted. They have a massive, they make a massive living out of uh, CPD. CPDs turn into a multi-million pound industry. Um, and they've got it, you know, it's, it's overseen by a statutory body, which is exactly what they want. So that people don't have any choice but to use their product or service. A, uh, it's a statutory requirement to do CPT and pay, pay some money for it. So, so now, you know, if people say to me, well, you know, I, but I'd like it done this way, you know, it's another, you know, like a patient. I recommended he, um, he had one tooth that was in a pretty bad way. And I said, you need to put it under a bridge, replace the tooth next door, strengthen the tooth at the other end of the bridge, get some of your chewing back. And he said, no, you know, can you just quote me for a crown? And I said, no, I won't quote you for a crown because that's not what I recommend. You know, although obviously it's cheaper. Um, so I'm gonna stop, you know, 
it's not that I'm going to be less. Uh, I'm not going to be less. Uh, how can I put it? Helpful in terms of suggesting what people might want to have done. I'm just going to be slightly less tolerant of people who tell me that I don't know my job and uh, I don't know. I don't know how to fix their teeth. I'm going to, still going to give them all the options. I'll tell them what all their options are, all the viable options anyway. Then if they come up with an extra option that I don't, uh, is not clinically supported, then I should say to them, I'm sorry, that's that's not on the table. And I might be a bit more blunt about it than I, than I, you know, rather than sort of going over all my ideas again and saying how good they are, I might just say, no, that's a really crap idea. <laughs> so, so I'm not going to discuss it, you know. All right. <clears throat> nice to talk to you. Bye.